I'm Steve for This Week With Cars, and today it's time to get back to my LMTV Overland Camper. Currently, on the inside of the camper, the only way to power things like the microwave and the air conditioning is to either plug into shore power or a generator using this cord here. So today, I'm going to install a lithium battery inside with an inverter to power everything. This is an upgrade that you could do at home on any camper or RV. So if you're interested in adding more power and versatility to your camper, this is going to get interesting. If we come inside, you can see I've already taken up the cushions where the couch was and one side of the dinette. And that's because I'm going to install the lithium battery that I got from Roy Pow, along with my Ames inverter and the charger for the Roy Pow battery all under here. In my previous video, I showed you how all of these things work together and to install it here into the camper, I'm going to need a couple more devices. Most importantly, I bought this Go Power transfer switch, which is going to allow us to switch between the inverter power and the shore power or generator power. And this black box is the trick to making this work in any camper or RV. And since the inverter will now be hidden inside the box over there, I bought the remote that goes along with it. It just plugs in with a phone cord to the front of the inverter. Then I can mount it up on a panel somewhere. We can control the inverter remotely. My first thoughts are I want to try to fit the battery and the inverter into that box there and then put the charger into this box which has this net right here. So it will allow the fan on the charger to still cool properly. It should have pretty good airflow within this box here because of these nets. So the charger will be here, the inverter and battery will be over here. After seeing how well everything fit, I decided to put it all under the dinette instead of putting anything under the couch. So all this room will still be able to be used as storage as before. The inverter and the battery will also want to be cooled. So I decided that I'm just going to vent this entire area and put everything in one place and then make sure that I have good ventilation to keep everything here cool. I'm not going to fasten any of these things down to the floor yet because I will have to pick up various pieces of equipment to connect wires to them. So now we can move on to wiring in the transfer switch. The power from the shore plug comes into this box here and then is distributed out to the rest of the circuits. On the other side, you can see this is the converter box. This contains all of the 12 volt fuses as well as the 120 volt circuit breakers. Also built into this is a battery charger that charges up the house batteries. Between our shore power and the converter box is where we need to place our transfer switch. So I need to pull the front cover off of here so we can gain access to the wiring. Down here we have where all of our neutral wires are connected and over here all of our grounds. And then our hot wire connects to the bus bar that distributes power to each of the circuit breakers. Let's turn them off now. This first circuit comes from our 30 amp main. Let's just double check that everything works the way I think it does. So I'll switch to voltage. I'll change to AC. Then if I measure from this screw here down to our neutral, we have 122 volts. Check it against the ground, 122 volts. So the power comes in from this wire. When this circuit breaker is on, it supplies the bus power with power, which can then can go out to the other circuits. So if we check these other circuits, they don't have any power to them. And if we look down inside here, it's the orange cable that comes in the back that is supplying the power to the circuit breaker. So now I'm going to unplug my shore power so that none of these wires are live. And then we can clip our orange wire and wire it up to our transfer switch. Looking back behind here, here is our orange wire. And that runs through a cable clamp over here. I will have to grab a security bit to remove that clamp so we can get the orange wire untangled and bring it up here to hook up to our transfer switch. I have that orange cable out from the clamp now. 
and there's plenty of slack to bring it up here, which is where I'm going to mount the transfer switch. I'm gonna put that down here. So I'll have to make some room in there. When I cut this orange cable, I'll have two ends that I can connect inside the transfer switch. Before I mount this down there, let's take a look inside the transfer switch. Inside here, we have a grounding bar over here and then hot and neutral wires, which go into a relay. And as one power source comes on, it will trigger the relay, switching it over to that power source instead of the other power source. So I think it makes sense to mount this to the floor so I can get the wires the correct length before I start installing anything. I have the transfer switch box mounted to the floor now. Now I can bring my orange cable up and I'll just cut it right here in the middle. And I can stick it through these clamps right here and wire it up with these Wago connectors. These are super cool. These are rated for camper use, RV use, and these will not come loose. These are way better than wire nuts and they're completely reusable. You just pop these up and down to clamp onto the wire. And you'll see in a second what makes these so useful in this situation. I have my first cable running in that is the ones that run to the converter box. So if we look at our wire diagram, they are going to connect to the top to the panel. So I'm going to wire the hot and neutral from here up to these top two wires and then connect my ground to the ground bar here. To connect these together, just flip the wire in there like that and then pop that down. Now we have the wiring supplying our panel done. Need to do the same thing with these. And this will be from the shore power, which according to our schematic, connects to these lower two connectors here. And then the other two will connect up to our inverter. Now I have our shore power source coming into the box, which connects to the bottom connectors on the relay. On the upper connectors on the relay is connected our power, which goes to the circuit box. Before I go any farther, I want to plug in the shore power and just make sure that this works and there's no problems with this before I continue wiring in the inverter. Before I plug anything in, let's check for power here again. So we'll go to the breaker, go to neutral. We do have 122 volts. So let's turn the main power circuit breaker on. Now let's turn a couple circuits on. That should have turned on the converter. You can see the fan spinning. Let's turn on this one, which has a fan plugged into it. Yep, the fan turned on. So it looks like the shore power leg of our transfer switch is working properly. Now we can wire up our inverter, and then after that, our charger for the lithium battery. I'm going to turn these all off and disconnect the shore power until I'm done. Now I've gotten some extra length of Romex and I've connected that up to where the generator or the inverter wires wire into the relay. Then this wire comes all the way around back here I cut a hole down in there for it to pass through. And then it comes up here and I'm going to be connecting that up to the inverter. So I'll take this cover off. Then I connect my wires onto this side and then the inverter will be able to supply power to the transfer switch as well. I've also taken the cable that comes from the charger and run it through that hole. And after I've tested the inverter, we'll connect the charger up as well. I have all those wires connected. Now I can set this down. We can power up the inverter and see if this part of the circuit works. Everything is wired up and right now we're on shore power. So hopefully you can hear that fan running. Now let's turn the inverter on and see if it switches over. So come over here to our Roy Pal battery. We'll turn the switch on. Now our battery bank is on. Now flip our, our switch to turn on our inverter. Now if we come back over here, in a second we should hear this click. Yeah. 
There it goes. And now we should be on inverter power. Let's make sure our fan is still running. Fan is still running. And we are now running off of the batteries. We can probably see this changeover easily if we connect up the voltmeter because our voltages are not going to be exactly the same. So on the battery power, we have 126 volts. I'll hit the switch and then let's see the voltage change. It just switched over to shore power and that's running at only 121 volts. So this means now we can power anything in the camper either off of the shore power, which also plugs into a generator, or off of the battery power from the Roy Pal golf cart battery. And that allows us to use everything, including the air conditioning or the microwave, anywhere we are. This whole setup works great, but what happens when this battery runs out of battery power? We'll have to recharge it. And we don't want the inverter to be charging the battery because we're drawing the power from the battery. That would be something that we don't want to happen. We only want the battery to charge when we're plugged into shore power, which means we are either plugged into a wall or a generator. So to do that, we'll come back to the transfer switch and we'll wire in a plug that goes to the battery charger off of only the shore power plugs. Now what I've done is added this cord here, which has a regular outlet end, and that will plug in to the battery charger. And I'll connect that up to the same circuit that the shore power comes in. And remember I said these Wago connectors are really cool? Well, I can just disconnect this Wago connector and put one that allows for three circuits. These connectors come in all kinds of different sizes. We have triples, this one has five. So I can disconnect one that uses two circuits and just replace it with a triple, allowing me to connect three wires where there were previously two. I have everything wired up now. You can see the battery charger is connected to that cord there. So if we come over here, I put the battery charger where we can see it. I am plugged into shore power right now, so the battery charger is running. Here's the remote for the inverter. Let's power that up, and in a second, it should switch over to inverter power running off this battery, and hopefully the battery charger shuts off because we don't want the battery charging while we're drawing power from the battery. We should hear a click and then hopefully that light will go off. Heard the click. Okay, it didn't go off right then because obviously this is plugged into the power cord. I need to do this backwards. I need to be on inverter power and then plug in the shore power and then we should see if the charger turns on because obviously the charger is going to be supplied power anytime we're plugged in. I went and disconnected the shore power. Our inverter power is still on. Right now, everything in here is being powered off of the inverter and our charger is not working. Right now we're running on battery power just off of the Roy Pal golf cart battery. Let's start turning some things on and see how much we can load this inverter down. Let's we'll start by turning on the air conditioning. Okay, the air conditioning is on. We're still holding at 39 volts. We're not even loading up this inverter much. In my previous test, one of the things that took the most power was turning on the vacuum cleaner. So let's turn that on and see how it can handle that along with the air conditioner running. There we go. Roy Plow battery still handling it. And we were only using about a third of the power that the inverter can put out. So things are looking really good. Let's turn on the microwave along with the air conditioning and see what happens. So the air conditioning is still running and now I am starting the microwave. The microwave is on. We're using about half of our inverter power. Let's try the vacuum cleaner. That is pretty much everything inside this camper on at once, all running off of the Roy Pal battery. Even a 2000 watt generator could not do that. All I have left is to just start tidying up the wires, tying them up, and mounting all of this equipment permanently in here. 
You'll have to wait till next video to see what I do for cooling this compartment. So if you want to see more videos like this, comment below and click subscribe.